Gulf of Mexico region has unique challenges with respect to infrastructure. The Gulf is vulnerable to hurricanes, tornadoes, oil spills, and potential impact for climate change. When I think about the need to improve our coastal infrastructure, much of that is because of climate change. Building projects that would resist a storm of a certain magnitude would only last for so long, so we had to build resilient systems. The purpose of this workshop is to bring together an eclectic group of brilliant people to talk about the various elements that affect infrastructure resiliency. At the White House, we're committed to make sure that new investments in clean energy, other areas of modern infrastructure result in safer and more secure and more resilient systems that Americans can rely on in times of crisis. How do we bounce forward? How do we adapt and create this constructive cycle where we end up in a better place than we were before? Part of what this exercise is, is to have stakeholders from different parts of the federal government, the local government, and people that are involved in infrastructure to really try to tackle in different scenarios what might happen and then what priorities would come out of it. How do we get the most bang for our buck, maximize and leverage the federal investment in infrastructure to get the best resilience return on that investment? I do think we're at a pretty sweet time in this business because there seems to be so much focus on wanting to improve infrastructure. I actually think there are opportunities today that probably didn't exist 20 years ago, and I think now they're ready to think about how can we make differences. That's one of the reasons I was so ready to come to this meeting. As soon as I heard that there was this type of workshop that was going to be going on of talking about how do we prioritize funding, it felt like an opportunity for me to build on my experiences that I had going around the country and also work with this great group of people to really hear what their viewpoints were and to bring those ideas back to my stakeholders. Hurricane Falsus makes landfall near Galveston as a Category 3. It's going to move really slowly around the coast, causing significant flooding, exacerbated by a number of toxic chemicals mixing with the floodwater. This region is really known for particularly high social vulnerability rate. We were tasked with looking at these maps of cascading impacts and then prioritizing which projects would make the most sense in terms of bang for the buck. Some of the items that came out of day one was speaking to how we build and building more sustainably, talking about utilizing some of the new technologies on the built environment, fortified roofing systems, also talking about utilization of solar and the implementation of green infrastructure. From my perspective, you're always putting the electric distribution system in particular right back up. And if there's a way we can get it out of harm's way, maybe we can improve the way you design some of the underground electric distribution components so they're not as susceptible to saltwater damage. A lot of the solutions I saw today were build back smarter. How do you provide for societal benefits, which are multi-purpose? Not just providing, say, a shelter from a storm, but providing something that the community can use. Today, on day two, we're focusing on a protracted oil spill. There were different environmental impacts that had to be considered. There were different human health impacts that had to be considered. Economic scenarios about diverting resources from particular areas, how this was going to impact tourism and the fishing industry, for example. One of the things that we saw the most projects being prioritized on was this idea of communication. Right now, we don't have broadband available everywhere. A lot of the communities down in the south are rural, and they don't have good access to the the internet, and that leads to issues of equity. A lot of what we've looked at is wisely co-investing along with industry in certain technologies that may be beneficial, both for prevention, for maintenance, inspection, and then remediation. We don't have a really coordinated network that's monitoring our pipelines, or monitoring the offshore activities so that we can respond in a more rapid fashion should there be a need. The other thought that's also out there is we need to have a preparedness campaign, educating the citizens on that one, that there's always a potential for an oil spill, and then should that happen, these are some things that could occur. There were some deep conversations about the challenge of preventing privately held assets from becoming public liabilities. 
There were really rich discussions of needs for changes in regulatory or permitting approaches, ranging from land use to sales of oil and gas production facilities. I heard about the need for respectful inclusion, real inclusion of the communities. I heard a lot of talk about interdependencies among different components. There's data, there's baseline and monitoring issues. There's so much effort on restoration climate change. Each of us have a role in these different parts of the puzzle. Not only am I hopeful, but I am certain that something really good will come out of not just this workshop, but all of the processes and hard work that will follow this workshop. People recognize the magnitude of the problem, recognize that something has to be done, and it takes collaborative work across many, many stakeholders. I'm hopeful that this is more than just theory, but really implementation is going to be the most critical piece. It's important that we do that from a space of equity. My hope is that we can make an impact. We will make a difference within the Gulf, and that work in the Gulf would expand to different parts of the country in terms of what is infrastructure resilience all about. And that 100 years from now, people are saying that we did the right thing.